Okay, what's the pleasure of the board? I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. Is there a second to that? I'll uh, second that. Uh, the thing is I can uh, I'll abstain from the April 18th. Okay. The second under discussion, Mr. Quarantino will abstain from April 18th. And, and also, Mr. Chairman, I'll only be voting on the May 9th. Okay. May 9th for the also, record. You, also Kevin and Mary Rose. Pleasure of the board. All in favor of March 14th, March 28th, April 18th? Aye. 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 Two abstain. May 9th, pleasure of the board. Actually, I'm, I'm going to abstain. Uh, May 9th? Yeah, I had to leave early for now. What's the pleasure of the board? I'll so move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Mataro will abstain. Thank you. First order of business will be a Class 2 dealer's license vehicle increase on 291 Drawing Street. The parties involved, please come forward. Mr. Nietzsche, if you would give your name and address to our secretary, and our town solicitor will sway you in for public hearing. Uh, my name is Eugene Nietzsche, 291 Berlin Street in Clinton, Mass., 160 Green Street in Clinton, Mass. Did you, uh, did you swear or affirm that the testimony about the people are subject to the whole truth and I do. Okay, Mr. Nietzsche, your application is before us. Do um, you want to give us a description of the property and what you intend to do? Uh, I have operated a small dealership garage there for the last 10 years. It's a half acre of land, uh, 2,000 square foot, three bay repair facility. Um, I would like to increase the amount of vehicles. Okay. Are there any questions of the board? We just received a uh, letter from the building inspector. We just want to make sure that everybody has afforded them the opportunity to mm -hmm. look it over real quick. There is also on file a ruling from Tom Dillon that was brought to our attention. Is that here? Do we have that in our possession, Joyce? Could we get that copy if Michael would have it, please? It would be the current building inspector. Current. Oh, never mind, Joyce. It's okay. Thank you, Joyce. Um, being a public hearing, is uh, there anyone in favor of the, tr the transfer to increase? <coughs> being nobody in favor. Anybody against? No one against. Would you want to give yourself a little further explanation of your intentions, Mr. Nietzsche? Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been issued a six car license, and it's just very hard to make a living trying to sell six cars. Mm -hmm. um, I feel a half acre lot is room for much more. Uh, and I have improved the property quite a bit in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. I, I have pictures of what it used to look like and what it is now. Yeah. Um, like I say, I've been there 10 years. It's not like I'm running away anywhere. It's been my livelihood, a slim one, but it's been one. Mm -hmm. Any questions of the board? Well, I have a question on this on this letter we just received. Uh, it, it states that the property is an R2 residential neighborhood. Does that in and of itself create the inability to increase the number of cars that are automobiles for sale? Does anyone know? Does, does um, I, I don't, I'm not intimately familiar with the zoning bylaw it, that states, um, it says that this is an R, in an R2 residential neighborhood and it has a class two uh, vehicle dealer's license. So I wanna know if that mm -hmm. precludes Mr. Nietzsche from getting a permit for more cars, just that in and of itself. Yeah, and my suggestion would be to have the building inspector come in Building mm -hmm. an opinion, and it's his call to the zoning by that time. Right, I mean, I, he's got. 
He's got his reasoning down below, but that's not one of them. He's just stating that, and I want to know. I just want to know for clarification: is that a reason or not? I, if it's not, then these other things, if they're cleared up, you know, and the investigation is done, you know, I, I need to hear that though. And the opinion is that yes, it is a violation to do an extension of it because we need to comply with local zoning, and it does comply with local zoning at this point. But if you want, if you'd like to give you a written opinion, and review the statute. Uh, in addition, my understanding is that the town had accepted a bylaw in 1989 that allows the town to deny any permits or licenses, but the results are suspended if people are not um, covered with the tax. And my understanding from the tax collector's office is that they may not be covered with their 2007 tax. How, how is it that there's a license now, though, with six, via, you know, allowing six vehicles? I, I don't understand that yeah, part. I don't know the history of the site, Joe. I mean, that has been there for years. Yeah. But to extend it or to increase it, it needs to comply with zoning. Yeah. And what I'm saying is the building inspector has given an opinion, and his opinion, it does not comply with zoning. So mm -hmm. in fairness to the building inspector, what we should do is have them come before the board to at least explain his opinion, because ultimately he's the one that decides whether or not he doesn't comply with zoning. It's his decision. So I, I guess, yeah. Have a very next meeting and have a great yeah, board as board's opinion. But I mean, the board tonight could deny just the increase of the vehicles if, if, if the request that's Certainly before us tonight. Has right. Yeah. The board has the right to go ahead and approve it. Yeah. The board has the right to modify it. But I'd make a motion to continue the hearing until we, so we can have the uh, building inspector come in and, and uh, you know, answer us, you know, give us some more information. Yeah, I think we should also confirm that there's a tax to pay for something, because I think that that would be a violation of the bylaws. Okay. Well, I'll yeah, see. letter from the second time to make sure that the compliance with tax code. I'll second Tony's motion to continue at any rate. Second to continue. The hearing process and um, actually um, the tax collector did contact me and there is an outstanding uh, tax tax bill for last year I paid that uh, FY 207 this past year you cleared up the past I knew this was going to be an issue that's why I, I did my research and uh, if you clear up FY 07 you're free to go. I thought I just, what did I just pay him? Uh, that I'm not sure. I believe what was paid was the tax time account because it was the length of the prior. Okay. Currently what's on the, uh, currently what's on record is $3,808.86 to today's date. So as long as that is cleared up, that won't, Okay. That's one issue scratched off the list. I just paid him like two weeks ago, 3900 yeah. He gave me a figure today when I was in the building for a meeting because he knew this was coming up. And uh, right to today's date is, is the uh, accurate number. And, uh, but there's a motion on the floor to continue the process, and I will afford you due process. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, we'll set another date with you, Mr. Nietzsche. <coughs> And we'll get all our facts in order and we'll sit down and talk with you then. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Mr. Chairman, could we have the administrator ask the yes. building agent? To Absolutely. Talk? I want the building inspector here. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, are we right on time with 710? Is the uh, parties here for the uh, common victual hearing on 134 Brook Street? Wu Lan Wu doing business as new soapbox laundromat. Parties aren't present. Do they have to be here, Michael, uh, physically for this? Common victual? What's the pleasure of the board? I'd make a motion that um, we continue this as well. I mean, I, I don't even know. Okay. You know, I'd rather let the, the owner be here. Okay. Is there a second to that? 
Second. Second. Any discussion? Is, is this just a transfer? This has been open all along, right? Yeah. It's been open a while. Yeah, I believe there's an existing business there and there's new people taking it over. Yeah. yeah. I know they came in and made out the application, so. So it's, te it's technically a new license, but it's, it's a new one yeah. taking over. Right, but right. it's an existing right. business that's there. Pre existing business. Okay. Pleasure of the board. All those in favor of continuing? Aye. 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 Uh, to unanimous choice, Michael Weber has scheduled them for our next meeting. The motion to go out of order because we have to follow, or, or unless we're close to 7 15. One minute. Do you have anything you want to get over in a minute? Yeah, you want to do the uh, <laughs> administrative. Yeah. Oh, we don't have any items. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, no, no items. Okay. okay. Do we want to accept, do we have a new uh, draft warrant? Is the warrant article all set for, to bring forward to the finance committee for their final approval for tomorrow night? Or do we have to wait and discuss that other yeah, issue? Yeah, okay. So we'll go back to that. Okay. 7.15 now, we probably could bring the parties forward and get everyone sworn in. We have a legal notice for a liquor license hearing for Coco Cream Cafe and the Vineyard Cabaret. Elaine Brillhart doing business as. Those parties want to come forward, be sworn in by our town council. Swear or affirm the testimony you vote to give the board of selectmen to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I'll be done. I do. Thank you. Okay, Lane, if you could just uh, briefly tell us your proposal um, for what you're going to be doing with your establishment. Okay. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Elaine Brillhart, and I own Days Gone By Antiques and um, what will soon be Cocoa Cream Coffee Cafe, uh, downtown Clinton in the Sovereign Bank building. Um, I moved to town about 18 years ago and found out that it was uh, very easy to fall in love with this town, uh, probably beginning with the first time I drove by the park. I'm not originally from town, but I, I believe I share the commitment of those people that are originally from town. I love living here, it's been a great 18 years. And one of the things I said to myself when I first uh, walked downtown was that there were some nice new businesses that had opened and some existing ones that were also very nice. There were also some vacant storefronts. And I had a vision that maybe someday I could open a shop and make my own contribution to um, the restoration of downtown Clinton. And I saw that opportunity about nine years ago. Uh, I saw an opportunity to open a consignment shop and an antique shop um, combined into one. I did that, named it Days Gone By, and it's, um, it's been a great adventure, and the business has done reasonably well. And um, this wasn't part of the plan, but about a year and a half after I opened, I saw an opportunity to sell ice cream to the community, more or less as a service to the community. And that developed uh, eventually into a full restaurant, which I named Coco Cream Cafe. I ran that restaurant for five years, and um, it was a lot of work and a great adventure. And in the end, the restaurant was doing extremely well. We attracted people from all the surrounding towns, and it was very popular and very well received. And I was really proud to own um, my small business in downtown Clinton. But I finally had to admit that it wasn't possible for me to be in two places at one time, and it wasn't really possible for me to put my heart and soul into two separate businesses. And because of that and a combination of other reasons, um, I decided to close uh, Cocoa Cream Cafe. 
again, not because it wasn't successful, but I have really had to choose between the two businesses. And I chose my antique business, which had always done well. Um, it broke my heart to close. I never wanted to, and virtually every day customers come in asking about the business. But it was the best decision I could make at that time. And um, what's interesting is that right around the same time, there um, suddenly became a, a, a big change in the antique business. And because of the internet, antique dealers were suddenly closing shops everywhere we turned. And I came to realize a couple of months ago that this business that I've been running is not doing as well as it did, and it never will. And I know that from talking to other dealers, that the internet has had a huge impact on my business. And I really have to get into the internet business if that's, if that's what I want to do as far as the antiques. I don't want to do that. I want to be part of downtown Clinton. I don't want to spend my day on the internet. So I wasn't quite sure what to do. Um, and then I saw uh, a need um, just recently in the town for a coffee shop. Having served a, a popular breakfast um, with the muffins and the baked goods and the scones and so forth, I knew what was involved. And I decided that it, it really wouldn't be um, too difficult to open a coffee shop. And um, so I proceeded to apply for my, my license once again, and thank you, that was granted. I am looking at opening my coffee shop, um, if all the approvals have come forth from the Board of Health and so forth, on Wednesday of next week. So I will be partially back in the restaurant business, but in a very different way. Um, I'm not having waitresses. People will serve their own coffee. The decor is, is quite lovely and comfortable. And then something else came to my attention, and that is the fact that there was um, a full liquor license that was available here at the town hall. I never thought I would want to go back into the food business. Um, it was not a plan of mine, but I guess you could say going to work for Walmart isn't a plan of mine either. <laughs> and um, I have to make, I have to change with my business. Um, small businesses are struggling tremendously. And I do know that, that my, um, my restaurant was successful, and I do know that, that having a liquor license would, would be a, a great benefit to me. Um, but more important than that, um, this is a vision, a dream really, that I've had for probably six years. Um, people started coming into my shop and, and saying, you know, gee, wouldn't it be nice if we could get a glass of wine and a sandwich or, you know, talking about the possibility of having a, a quiet lounge with old-fashioned music. And it's something I've always wanted to do. Now, Clinton does have um, many fine drinking establishments, and I've been to most of them. Um, I've been to the Gale House. I like it very much. It's, it's a lovely place. I've gone before and I'm sure I'll stop by again. I've been to the old timers. I've had my glass of wine at the movie theater across the street. And all of these businesses serve the community, the town, and serve it well. But I'm looking at doing something that is different. Um, not something that would have rock music, but quiet music that would encourage conversation. And I have made arrangements, um, if, this is, if this goes forward, um, with someone who plays and restores pianos, and there would be a baby grand piano and a player piano. And the idea would be that people uh, in the morning could come in for their, their coffee and their baked goods, and in the evening they could come in and they could listen to the piano, or they could listen to a singer, or perhaps someone playing folk guitar. But it would be a, a quiet meeting place for people from Clinton and I would say it would bring people from other communities as well, because I know my restaurant did that. So um, that, that is my, my plan at this time, um, is to, um, to go for the, the full liquor license. And um, I'm sure you have questions about what I'm planning on doing. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can tell you now. I guess I just want to say that my heart is very much in this, and. I may not be from town, but I really do love this town, and I want to continue um, serving downtown Clinton or, or being part of the downtown community. I am asking everyone on this board to uh, consider my application for a full liquor license and to allow me to finally make this dream of mine come true. 
I'm not asking you to do it because it's what I want. I'm asking you to do it because it has become abundantly clear over the past six or seven years that there are many, many people in the town that would like to see this happen. I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people. Um, that's all I have to say right now. I hope you will decide favorably. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Are there any questions of the board at this time? I have a question, Bob. Yeah. Elaine, on your application here, uh, question 15, you just weren't sure, but maybe I can help you. It asks for financial interest, direct or indirect, in any other liquor licenses. Do you own any other liquor licenses currently in town or outside uh, of town? No, I've never <coughs> owned a liquor license in Clinton or any other town. Okay. okay. Any other further? Is, you had mentioned the building inspector or the, or the Board of Health. Are they ready to move forward that quickly? You mentioned by next week? Well, um, I will be <coughs> ready to have them take a look by early next week. If I do have to push my date back, I will. But I've spoken um, to, um, to Billy Dethout and uh, made arrangements probably for the inspection later this week. As far as the, um, the building inspector, I spent um, a good amount of time with him on Monday of this week and um, am waiting to hear back from him in terms of what the requirements are. Um, we are looking at whether there is a change of usage. Um, the fact that my restaurant was open less than two years ago means that um, it's not considered a change of, of usage and therefore that aspect does not require a building permit. But it is a gray area and I can tell you that I'm very respectful of um, whatever requirements there are that apply to, to people like myself um, um, applying for and possibly being granted a full liquor license. But yes, I, I, I work very closely with Tom Dillon when I opened my restaurant and I would look forward to working very closely uh, with our, our current building inspector. So it, um, it, it matters to me. I want to do the right thing for the right reason. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I can say something. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, so could you tell us more about what you plan on serving for food? Uh, you know? Sure. Yes, I can. Actually, I meant to tell you more about that. Um, when I had my restaurant, I did, I did breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a, in a big way. I mean, I was serving Chateaubriand and Filet Sol Oscar. And um, it worked out well, but it's, it's just too much work. And you know, I had a dozen employees. So this time around, um, I have a whole different model, and that is to keep it simple. And I am looking at um, nothing more than probably my chicken salad cashew sandwiches that were so popular, cheese and crackers, maybe a burger, um, some appetizers. I would not be offering any fried foods of any kind. It would be very simple. And um, the focus would really be on, on the music and the conversation for people that are there. So it would be a small menu with sandwiches and, and appetizers. And then there'd be also baked goods and desserts available and, and coffee, of course, if somebody didn't want to have a drink. I specialize in, uh, in desserts, so <laughs> we'd have plenty of those. <laughs> Questions? Yeah, no questions. It sounds like a good business model. Seeing that this is a public hearing, is there anyone here to speak in favor of the restaurant? Please state your name for the record, please. My name is Susan Dunkwitz. Your address? I, I live, my address right now is 9 Randolph Street in Uh huh. I live in Boylston for a few years with my sister Sandy, mm -hmm. and um, I am, I have the same likability of the small town of Clinton. I come from Leicester, and there's a lot of other buildings in Leicester and Spencer, and I appreciate it, and I love Victoria, I love the different buildings, and I just like to come down this way. Um, my kids attend to Hanzo and um, Boylston. School. Um, in the dam, I do know a couple people from town, um, the no backs, and uh, a few this way. Um, I've been out of work for a while, um, because of physical reasons, and um, my sister was coming down to talk to 
to look for a business space for that and ended up moving to a lane. And in talking with her, um, I was involved in the situation also. And um, it's always been, I, 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 it's funny what she just said, but it's always been my dream to open up a little vintage store and have what I want in there and, you know, jewelry and clothes and pictures and antiques mixed up contemporary with new and just whatever we can bring in to bring some life to it. And I've always wanted to do that all my life. And I am not in a very good financial position right now and a lady has graciously offered me to be able to come in without paying rent and to bring my own things in to sell and receive 100% profit just to get me on my feet and eventually take over also the commission on what I sell with her things and exchange for rent. And she's willing to do that for as long as it takes me to get on my feet. And I believe there's a little more here than just a coincidence. And um, it's just the people that have come together that have found the same connection to a true love. And she just, she just been very gracious to me and that's why I have to do Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else in favor? Your name for the record? Hi, I'm Sister Sandra Bartlett. Um, I actually came to this town um, to sunrise with a teacher and thought I could find a brown coffee table, and I did. And then I went across the streets of Wayne and um, with her antiques. And at the same time, found her sitting in a little area with some of her friends thinking about the business that she wanted to get moving and um, found the same sort of connection with her and was so deep in my heart that I, I was listening to her because most people really don't care about the small person, but she does. And, and I started talking about that and that's how we became acquaintances and friends and fortunately my sister also. I can't think of a better more significant, more sincere person than Elaine, although I've only known her for a short period of time, to open business downstairs. Um, she's opened her heart to us, and I am willing to do whatever I need to do for her, whether it be for pay or not, I will do whatever I can to help her business get up and running. Um, fortunately, also for me, she's willing to do that for us also. So I'm hoping to maybe on the other side of our business, be able to sell some clothing and jewelry and maybe get my small business up and running soon, if not in the, in the near future. Um, these big businesses come and they do take over. Um, but there are really not too many small businesses that are willing to give each other a chance. And like my sister said, we're, we're trying to bring all them together. Um, I live in Boylston, not too far away. And it's a short distance, and this town is really wonderful. We don't really have any business in Boylston, unfortunately. The team or the select men don't want to have the businesses, unfortunately. So I've been drawn up to this neck of the woods, and I love it. It's great. Um, I'm supportive of everything that she's doing and hoping that I can fill in the other half of her business to make this town more of what it should be. Thank you. And, yeah. Elaine, how, how are these businesses going to collaborate? Is there another one? I'm sorry. Your name for the record? Robert Olson, live on Prescott Street. Uh, these two ladies here were describing Lane and her uh, other businesses she does um, as far as her antique business. I understand right now this discussion right now having to do with the liquor license. Right. That's what I was just trying to tie. How are we tying these two into this? So I'm hoping to bring it back into the perspective here. Uh, I've only been three years here in Clinton. I like to go downtown, but I don't like to be the Gale House and their bars or whatever, they're fun, they do their thing. It's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been involved in other uh, businesses, or I should say friends who have businesses that are what I call a coffee house type of mentality. Mm -hmm. And I believe Elaine is trying to bring the coffee house type of mentality into a location in, in, uh, in Clinton. 
where you can go down there. It's not going to be open from 11 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the morning. She's looking for some place where maybe the new people coming into town can go there from 5 to 9 o'clock at night, 5 to 11 o'clock at night. You know, looking for a place where you can drink 35 beers and get drunk and leave. Look at the fancier drinks, the, the, the more fun times, a, a piano bar, uh, a different type of establishment that Clinton doesn't have at the moment that I know of. Basically a coffee house type of thing where you have comfortable chairs, you sit around and you talk, you don't hear loud music, you don't hear a bunch of people as you, you know, talking. And that's what I'm, I would really like to go to in Clinton. I go to the Gale House and it's just, I'm 55 years, 53 years old now, it's not what I want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no place for me to go sit down on the couch and have a nice time, have a cup of coffee and or a fancy drink. And I think her proposal to you is something Clinton doesn't have at the moment. And that's more than the time to push. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I'd be happy to answer your question and tie it all together. I spoke more about this um, at the last meeting, but one of the things I'm trying to do here is to answer the question, what is happening to small businesses? They are closing down. Um, people are supporting the big businesses, and we need the big businesses, but people love their <coughs> small downtowns. We are so lucky to have the downtown that we have. And yet, the way things are going, businesses cannot stay in business. Uh, I think we had three in town that closed last month, and there are more to come. So I'm looking at this saying, well, what, what can I do to help? So I thought if I went forward with this business that I've talked about, I would still keep the antique business. I've learned I cannot run both. And I would bring three or four other small business owners in and let them take over different segments of the antique, collectible, and gift shop. So the two women, women that spoke recently are two of the small business owners who would each be handling a segment of the antique shop at 65 High Street. Mm -hmm. And then there's a gentleman who couldn't be here tonight whose specialty is more the antiques. So we're hoping that we can offer people an experience where they can come in and they can have coffee, they can shop, they can buy clothing or jewelry or whatever. So I see it not just as a way of my staying in business, but as a way of offering something to the town and a way of helping small business owners who can't make it on their own. So together we'll share expenses and together hopefully uh, thrive as, uh, as small businesses. I just have one more question. Sure. One more Elaine, does your lease allow for you to sublease? Um, I've, done it in, I've done it in the past with the permission of Sovereign Bank. Um, at the time, they said as long as I was still there, it was okay. There was a six-month period of time where I rented um, to someone who ran the restaurant. Um, it was called the, uh, well, it doesn't matter, but anyway, yeah. I rented to someone for six months, and they did approve it. They're fully aware of it. So I'm, I'm working with them to get, uh, to get another approval on this. So the decor, I didn't mention the decor either, but um, instead of having a traditional bar, I've gone with the model, which I've later found out is popular in, in some of the um, European uh, towns. And that is, um, I have a 16 foot uh, antique walnut table from the 1920s. It's solid as a rock, and we just refinished the top of it. And seating will be around the table uh, in, instead of uh, at a bar where you have your backs to some people. And it's positioned in such a way so that everybody at the table will be able to see the, the entertainment, the baby grand piano, and, and whatever's going on in the establishment. In addition, there are wing back chairs, and settees, and some oriental rugs, and a fireplace. Not a real working fireplace, by the way. Um, and it's very homey and comfortable, this sofa and you can come in and join the crowd and talk about whatever's going on or you can sit off in the corner with your own group and have a quiet conversation okay, thank you michael um is the paperwork all in order in this packet you notice the lease runs out august 12th yeah we have a have a current lease in here no as of this time that lease is still in effect okay. that's the lease that was submitted with the application okay. 
My lease has been renewed on three occasions already, and um, and I've talked to Sovereign Bank, and they will be sending one to me probably um, early July and June. That's fine. Is there anyone here saying it's a public hearing to talk against granting a liquor license? Being no one here to grant against, what's the pleasure of the board? Are there any more I, questions? Bob, I have one question probably yeah. for uh, council here. Uh, Dennis, if we do grant the uh, license, how long does Elaine have to come to complete her renovations and there was no code. set time period in the code itself it would be a reasonable time period uh, my understanding is she has already started to work with i think the board of health and the building inspector mm -hmm. uh, the building inspector and the fire chief are aware that it's their obligation once a license is approved the local level mm -hmm. by the abcc to do an inspection to grant a certificate indicating that it complies with the so code. we don't have a time frame i just i should ask this question last meeting but because yeah. we did approve others that are in the the there process. isn't a defined time period where it's a drop dead time period. It's more a reasonable time period as determined by the board and by the there's board. A, isn't there's a procedure to check off list, make sure the bathrooms are handicap accessible, the kitchen is up sure. and running, yeah. the smokes, ancillary, all that stuff has the to be done prior to opening. I was just curious if it was yeah, a year that Elaine had or if it was a year and a half. I mean, we don't she could have understand. five years, I think, right? The, the building inspector will go through and make sure that the premises comply with the current right. code. Fire chief will go through. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really um, a bit more of a gray area than, than one would think because it's an older building and the um, the building code is fairly extensive and there, there are a number of different considerations. I can tell you um, that um, I, I want to do everything the right way. I want to meet code. I'm not sure what expenses I will incur mm -hmm. and I have some, some concerns about that. Um, but I plan to find a way to do what I need to do. Um, to make this a, a respectable business, and I would love to be able to welcome um, folks um, that are handicapped or perhaps in a wheelchair to my establishment. So I will work with the, um, the building inspector to find out what exactly is required because there has been some confusion in my mind about that, and then step forward to make it happen. And I, and I would hope it's not five years, the reasonable time. Oh. I'm hoping well, it's within a no, year I'm that just, we're... <laughs> I don't know what the time, I mean, yeah. I don't know what the building codes are. Yeah. And, as, and as the task lists are indicated, even if a license is approved, we cannot issue without a signed certificate on file right. uh, in the folder, which is signed by both the building commissioner and the fire chief as well. So they both need to sign off on both codes, issue a certificate, we need a copy in the file, then we can physically give the license to the, uh, to the applicant. My, my point was more that we're tying the license up from someone who may be ready to go. and. Right. I didn't want to do that for five years. Uh, and, and no, but, you know, I, I, I'm a fellow that hangs in there, but five years is a little too long for me too, Kevin. Okay. Um, no, I hope and, so. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm the type that would move as quickly as I possibly could. And um, I would hope to be, well, I, I'm not going to give a time frame, but I do yeah. know that you can't, you know, if you hold a license more than six months, then the board usually questions it. And I would expect to have to uh, to answer any questions at, at that time. Um, but um, no, I, I respect the fact that the license needs to be used. Um, it belongs to the town. It needs to be used. And if for some reason I wasn't able to make that happen, then I, I would be uh, happy to turn it over to someone who could. Okay. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? If there's no more questions. I would make a motion that we grant Elaine Brohart the uh, full liquor license. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Any discussion? Being none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. just as a secondary matter, uh, which is more of a housekeeping matter under the statute, because there's churches in the area, and because there's a school in the area, you just need to make a specific finding that it's not substantially detrimental to the spiritual and educational activities of the church or the school. Okay. We've done that previously with other liquor licenses. Okay. So it's just a formality, I assume. You've all considered that because it's in the packet. Yeah, there has been, um, there's, there's a letter in our packet to all the churches and the school and there has been no response. And let the record reflect that the er local area churches that were uh, notified, uh, First Congregational Church on Walnut Street, First Baptist Society, 14 Walnut Street, Kadashi International Ministry, 46 High Street, St. John the Evangelist Church, the Roman Catholic Bishop of Worcester. Um, J. 
Jerry Gaw, Public Schools, Ms. Geraldine Sargent, Clinton Elementary School. So, um, seeing the record uh, reflect that they've all been notified and no one is here to come forward tonight, let the record show that there has been no, uh, no negative comments against the uh, license hearing process. So, we can move forward. I'm sorry? We can move forward now, or do yes. you need that in the form of a motion? Yes, it should be in the form of a motion. Would someone please make that in the form of a motion? So moved. So moved by Mr. Nataro. Is there a second? Second. Second by Anthony Ferrantino. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck, Elaine. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. I look forward to making this contribution to the town. I'll do my very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Do we have to go back to the other uh, issue? On your own business. Okay. Good. Sure. So forth. Next, we have. Uh, sorry for a little behind. Bob Weymouth and Elaine Weymouth. There's a public hearing for a uh, common eviction law license for Copy Lanes. Elaine, how are you? Good. Hi, Bob. Hi. How are you? Pretty good. Um, if you would, for the record, give your name and address to our secretary so we can have it on file. My name is Bob Weymouth. I live at 24 Wall Street. Thank you. And could you just give us a general description of what you're going to do with your business proposal? Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to finance it. Mm -hmm. And my wife and the woman in back of me can give you more information okay. on that than I can. All right. <laughs> Elaine, if you would. Okay. I'm going to open a computer center cafe. Mm -hmm. Computer center is needed in this community. I've worked with the elderly. I've worked with students. For the last seven, eight years, teaching them computers. I know. The adult ed program. Yep. Um, it's needed. Seniors need to have contact with their families. Students need to have contact with teachers if they don't. And we want to bring in a nice, classy Wi Fi cafe. Okay. Okay. Um, we're doing everything according to what the health department requires. Mm -hmm. Our lead is going to be managing the cafe part. Mm -hmm. We like foods. Um, we have a few really good surprises coming into the community that we're mm -hmm. very excited about. Um, we just think the community needs a center. We don't want it just particularly an internet cafe. Mm -hmm. We have two rooms um, that work very well. The ambiance would be wonderful. And, and People will be able to access the internet on their own with total privacy. Um, no additional conversation with anybody. They will require whatever they require they'll have. We have another side. We have a little three-store set, three-store tables, everything. And we have another room in the back where we'll have teaching classes where we'll be able to teach um, people how to use the internet, how to use the computer. The seniors connected to the families that are away from them. Um, we'd also like to have a lottery for students that do not have computers at home for <coughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, we'd also like to have a lottery. There are many students still in town that do not have computers at home. Um, uh, just a lot of me where, you know, the parents are very small, be prepared that the others can come in after school and uh, the private room that we have and do their homework, get their work done, free access to the computers and the printers, everything that they need. So. Okay. Is there any questions on the board? I just have one, Bob. <clears throat> Elaine, just help me out. 120 Union Street? Yes. Whereabouts? Where is that? Okay. Underneath. Um, Under Realty Vision? Yes. 
going to work with me on the lease. It's not a long term. He believes that this will work. He's excited about it, Mr. Pagliaria, and um, he's not making us stay the long term lease just in case it doesn't work, which it's going, going to happen. <laughs> it's going to work. Look, I have the reputation. I went. I knew what I was doing, but I went to school to to uh, get the degree that I needed to do this. Good. Um, Oh, we'll also be doing computer repair, uh, computer lessons, Wi-Fi for cafe. Uh, I've spoken with the detectives in the probation office. They're willing to come in and provide classes for families, parents that are interested in children's safety on the internet. We want to That's make good. sure Terrific. that these people in the area know the right way to keep an eye on their children and protect them. Very good. It's very important for me. Um, I have more of a community interest in what we're doing here. I know. Um, <clears throat> I've taught people like Thomas Moore and the gold, the gold clothing people during the classes that we teach and they, they want more. You know, they, they, these people want to come back for more lessons. So we just have to give it to them. Great. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? It's a pleasure of the board. I'll still move, Mr. Chairman, we grant the license. Motion moved by Ms. Dicko. Second. 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 Second by Jonah Tower. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations and good luck. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make a motion that we go into a quick uh, change of events. The parties are here for the laundromat. I'd entertain a motion to put it back in real quick. So moved. To go back, take it out of continuance and bring it back in. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Any discussion? Being <coughs> none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Would the parties please come forward? Uh, Rui Lan Wee, 134 Brook Street, new soapbox laundromat. Okay. You just give your name and address to our secretary so it's on record. You have to give me your name. a brief description. We know you bought the business and you're just taking things over. You want to just give us a brief summation of what? Yeah, yeah actually, just so, just so everybody knows, she just grabbed me from the laundry mat because she doesn't speak English. Sure, not so a that's, problem. That's the only reason I'm here. No, so not a problem. If you could help us, that's great. Yeah. She's looking to install, my understanding is a Coke machine and a candy machine. Yeah. Or maybe potato chips. Okay, it's and a vending machines, yeah. That's something that she has to come before the board for. Right. Okay, so I guess whatever, I don't know how this, if this is the first time she's been here, but she needs yes. the information to. Right. Okay, are there any questions of the board? Okay. Motion to accept. Make a motion to accept. Motion by Kevin Healy. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Ms. Dickout. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, good luck. You're all set. All set. Does she need any documentation or anything? The office will send her down a common VIC license as yeah. well as the Board of Health will go down and inspect, I'm sure. Okay. okay. And will it be, does that have to be like hung up a little instruction? Yeah, the, yeah you, you should put it in a picture frame and put it up in your place of business where you have your certificates. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are we at 7.30 yet, Michael? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, we're running real late. We have a public hearing for a poll, uh, poll hearing for the uh, wireless communication facility special permit hearing 292 Green Street. Sprint, Sprint here. Do we treat this like a public hearing, Dennis? Okay. <laughs> Not a problem. The tower. 
Um, we did go ahead and repost it, um, and you know, everything is, we're submitting is proposing a 150 foot tower. Yes. Um, we did, I did give you suggestions that you guys want to see some photos in from particular places, um, and the tree line on the plan. That was um, four or five other requirements from the planning board mm -hmm. like to submit to tonight. Sure. Um, so we do have a revised set of plans. There is a um, full sunset right here. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. There was, um, according to the planning board, there was two um, residential structures that were omitted from the original plan. So we did. Uh, update the plans accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, also, on I believe it's page Z1, um, we did include the approximate feet above the existing tree line of the pole, which is 80 feet. Right. Um, the second set of plans is an addendum to the plans, which was requested by the planning board, um, demonstrating that it is on a hill. The slope of the post cut into the existing bank um, shows the retaining wall, uh, the equipment, and the existing parking ring. The photo sims, uh, the first is a map that shows where the pole is uh, kind of an aerial view of the streets. Um, I really appreciated that being put in the packet. It gave me a better perspective yeah. of my old neighborhood. Yep, definitely. Um, and then uh, the board did request from Birch Road, Beach Street, and Cedar Street, um, and Grove Street, and those are all within the photo zone. Yep. Um, per the planning board as well, we requested the town engineer requested um, there is a, I believe, a of residential structure right there um, regarding the emissions report from. Um, Health report, mm -hmm. um, and we did submit that. Um, also, uh, removal bond estimate. If we were ever need to take it down, we did submit an estimate of what it would cost. Um, and also, the reason why we did go to this site is the previous site, 75 Green Street, um, was denied due to it was a historic mill. So we did include the approval letter for this particular site. Are there any questions from the board at this time? We pretty much went through all this the right. last yeah. hearing. Um, I like the fact that now we get color photos and save the black. I didn't get color. Yeah, they're in the, in the back of this. They're in your The only comments I have, Bob, on this, uh, I would have liked to have seen the pictures from the top of Cedar Street instead of Haskell Ave. Um, I mean, because that's where you're looking back. I mean, Haskell Ave is just showing right here. I mean, yeah, I know it's showing pretty much halfway up. Cedar I Street. think they have one of, all have of Mr. Sadowski's yeah, that's property. Yeah, halfway up Cedar at uh, Haskell yeah. Ave. Yeah, yeah, there's one like up there. From the top. We got yeah. one at the top. Yeah. Benefit at Cedar. There's pictures. Yeah, I mean Church and Cedar. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, yeah. I'm pleased to see everything is uh, 150 all the way. <laughs> yeah, I do apologize. We did do a, a read notice to all the above. Yes. The new height requirement. Yeah. What was the old height requirement, Mike? Or was it? Well, did they have to submit an application for one? Wrong height. Let's put it. That hasn't happened yet? Uh, no, they haven't had enough to look for it. We've been in front of it, haven't been heard. Um, and I believe the bylaws is 100, but if the full um, includes co locators, it's 130, so we're looking for a 20 foot variance. How many companies are going to be on the poll? I'm uh, sorry, I did. Three. Three? Right. How many can be on the poll? Well, I'm sorry, yeah, three. <laughs> three would be the max? Yes, unless um, a lot of times. Uh, carriers will come in and upgrade the pole, um, but they would have to go through the whole process again. Mm -hmm. But uh, for that, mm -hmm. three carriers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You, you also mentioned before that I, I believe at the last hearing that you wouldn't have a problem with putting a public safety antenna on there. No, no, uh, we have no problem doing that. Uh, the only thing was just um, it kind of takes away from because we're doing a monopole yes. inside, but we have no problem doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, I, there would be no rent on it. 
And um, I actually did check with somebody, they would be able to splice in to our electric service. Okay. Um, so it would be a whip, I believe, what public service um, they use, and it would be put at the top of the mm -hmm. tower. Are you able to disclose to us the fee that you're paying for the PAV? Um, I don't think we can, because I, well, I don't even know. I have a rejected lease. Okay. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? It's a pleasure of the board. Uh, I'd be uh, comfortable making a motion to, to uh, approve the application as presented. as presented. There's a motion on the floor to approve the application as presented by Mr. Carantino. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Nataro. Any discussion? Mr. Solicitor. Mr. Chairman, just under uh, discussion, uh, in light of the fact that there's a motion made to approve, I would just recommend that we incorporate by reference the conditions in the zoning bylaw at 8250, which are the conditions for approval. Okay. That it also be subject to the approval of the height variance. Mm -hmm. uh, that we be allowed to put the public safety line on there at no cost to the town. Okay. And that if they decide to cease using the facility, then within one year of ceasing that use, they would agree to remove any equipment from the site and that they would have a performance guarantee to make sure that they do that. Okay. It's all in the bylaw, but I just want to make sure that we incorporate that into the written decision because yeah. if the board does approve it, then I'll prepare a written decision. Right okay. Mr. Parentino, would you amend that to the town solicitor's recommendations? Yes, sir. So there's a second to that? Second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, and we'll forward to whatever documentation Great. we need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. I'm awful sorry about our lateness tonight. Um, if you want to come forward, please, please. Uh, the municipal lot uh, proposed amendment on Church Street. Elias. I don't want to. Petuchus, but he, uh, Petuchus. he had a family emergency. When was, uh, okay, and you're here. Your name is? My name's James Lutton. James Lutton. And I'm the regional manager for Very good. Manager. Could you spell your last name for sure. me? Sure. L E T T O N. And very familiar face, Tracy Perkins, who does a fabulous job for you folks. She does, you. absolutely. So you're here tonight before us for an extension we, 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 of your, le your lease that the town uh, signed in on August... Uh, probably 1985. Yeah. I think it was a 50-year lease. Uh, we're in the process of refinancing the property. We're going to get a new 30-year mortgage sometime okay. around August of 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd like to extend this parking lot lease so it's coterminous with the, uh, the new finance. Okay. Michael, is there anything you need to update the board on regarding the extension of this lease? Uh, Are the municipal lot down at Oxford Courts? No, I think it's fairly straightforward. Okay. Uh, they're re restructuring their loan and they're just looking to have Certainly. the lease. We have the alternatives with that. With that All right. It's so a pleasure of the board. I think. Uh, uh, Some more does a discussion? Well, I just uh, I sure. have a discussion. I mean, you know, there's no motion, but I'm just trying to understand this two-year window. What it does? I mean, how does it change the? The situation. We, we, we're we're uh, refinancing the loan with Mass Housing, and, and part of the refinancing is they've asked us to come for you and get this two year extension on the uh, lot lease so that it will be uh, co terminus with the new financing we put in place, which, which will be uh, 30 years from August of 2007. It's just a finance requirement to, yeah. that it matches up with. So that it matches the mortgage document. Mortgage. Right. So the financing will occur. It, usually they stipulate that they want it to match, the leases to match the financing terms so that no leases are in place for the whole, the whole right. term of the, the financing. Okay. okay. All right, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Sure. So because you're the leases, you're responsible for the upkeep of that law? Uh, yes, that's correct. It's in the okay. lease. Okay. So who polices you? Uh, Yourselves? Yeah. I mean... Anytime there's if there's been an issue on the lot, for example, back last year Bob called me with a small issue, and I even asked him if it was handled within a matter of probably half hour by me. Twenty minutes. So, 
I mean, what I guess what I'm getting at is, like, say if uh, if there's abandoned vehicles. That's what I mean, she's referring to. Okay. Yeah, like there was an abandoned vehicle, and he actually asked me, and I could see that it was towed out of the parking lot, and it was gone in a matter of less than half hour. Yeah. But but what I'm saying is, he had to call you. Do you do your own policing? That's what I'm asking. Yes, we do. Actually, if you want to, you know, check with the police department, they were down here with me last week, and we actually towed two cars. I do not have because it's owned by the town and only maintained by Officer Court. I do not have the authority to actually tow the car off of the town lot. I can only do so on the Officer Court property that Officer Court and Claremont Management owns. But I can make the phone call to the police department, have them come down and actually tow it. And I've called them before. I mean, they've checked in with me on certain things that they've noticed before, but I've called them before and asked them to please ticket a car or tow a car. Someone was playing hide the trailer last year in one of the residents down there at the far corner, one of those very few houses mm -hmm. left. Someone just parked this trailer there that was parked over here on Walnut Street for over a year. And when I, they kept moving it and hiding it, and when I brought it to her attention, it was gone in 20 minutes. And okay. the neighbors were very happy. So is that parking spot, is that the town's, right? That parking area? Right. right. It, we own it and they maintain it. So if it's under their lease, so that means, I mean, is the public allowed to park there or not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, because they were very gracious to, when I was on the school committee, Oxford Court was very gracious to us uh, in many ways when we built the new school. They erected a fence for us. They paid the cost of the fence, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, they helped out with the playground room and the construction of getting vehicles in and out of there. They were, they were really good neighbors to the uh, whole situation. We actually relocated our dumpsters. Yeah, they moved everything for us so that they they reached out and accommodated the uh, town of Clinton very well. That's why I have a familiar working relationship with Tracy as well as my board of health days. And actually, with us maintaining the lot, we put down the mulch, the flowers, do the snow removal. Um, two summers ago, the lot was actually repaved, and when we repaved our portion of the lot, we also repaved the town portion of the lot. You could go look now, it's actually blocked off to be swept free of sand tomorrow morning beginning at 6 a.m. Yeah. Is this the pleasure of the board if there's any more questions? I'll so move to extend the lease to. Okay, is there a second to that? Seconded. seconded by Mr. Nataro. Any discussion? Under, solicitor? under discussion, Mr. Chairman, yep. uh, would Oxford Court be in agreement with just adding a number five to your amended lease to just include that we give you the authority to remove unregistered motor vehicles from the lot? Oh, I would like if you're that. concerned sure. about whether sure. or not we have the authority and have delegated it to you under the lease, so could we work with whatever that language Absolutely. Is? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Very good. All those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Administrative business, we don't have any. Old and new, Michael? No. We're not going to hold no. the draft for it. No. Uh, we're going to go back to that because we there's an article there we have to talk about in executive session. Oh. Unless you want to go over it and then come back to it. It's up to you. Mm. If we don't know what it is, how can we talk? Right. speak okay. to it? So, yeah. I guess not. Okay. Come back to it. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're no administrative? Yeah. We just need a brief, uh, brief executive session before we move on. All right. Uh, just hold in the business a couple of items. I don't know if these are some items that the board had talked about. Uh, we talked to the board if they're uh, prepared to entertain them. Uh, one was the last meeting. There was a list of the boards and commissions that were available. Uh, what the board has done in the past is issue letters to the uh, current uh, appointees that are up for renewal and asking if they're interested in being renewed as well as putting an advertisement in the paper listing the committees that have uh, uh, renewal uh, positions uh, uh, up for this year uh, and then the person has to reapply or the public and the current person on that board would then reapply um, for consideration. So, and if the board wanted to start that process, they do end at the end of the school year. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we start the process. Okay. I'll second that. Second by Kevin. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, this discussion could, I, I mean, I know like we have a vacancy now in the, the Master Plan Committee, and I know that's an appointment of the Planning Board, but could we tag on an advertisement for that? Sure. Just so we um, are we allowed to do that? Or? 
Sure, yeah, I mean, if we're paying for it already, we can put that on the list, yeah, exactly. And then <coughs> any names that are received, we can submit them to the planning board yeah. uh, for their I, consideration. Yeah, I, mean, I, have, I have a letter of resignation from uh, Al Bafarum from the Mass Planning Committee, so I don't know if you have received it yet or... I have not gotten a letter, no. I did receive an email you know, saying that you wouldn't be able to, to do that, but, uh, but that, that, that would be a point of the planning board. But planning board would be a point, but I figured we could do right. it. Right, put it on the advertisement, sure, and then any letters that come in, we would forward them down to the planning yes. board for their consideration. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Michael, if you'd move forward and put an end in the paper, and we'll uh, hopefully get this done before July 1st when they expire. And so, like a two-week two notice week the paper, so it can be not okay. But we get it in this week, and maybe by the last week of June, we can consider the appointment. Okay. And Chris McGowan is here, and we have discussion on uh, cemetery charges. You want to come forward, Chris? We knew you were going to be here, so we bagged you twice. Two for the price of one. <laughs> we didn't get to act on this at our last meeting, and uh, Chris sent us a letter. Um, he did a survey of 34 towns to compare prices we charge with other communities. And the town of Clinton's rates are considerably lower than the averages of the town survey. Uh, so, uh, the uh, request is a weekday opening of $200, uh, average is $460.83, weekend opening in Clinton $350, the average in the surrounding towns is $565.17, weekday cremation is $75, the average is $137.66, weekend cremation in Clinton is $140, the average is $250, the average grave at our cemeteries in Clinton is $400, the average towns at 514.38. Do you have a rate, Chris, that you have in mind? Well, not really. I mean, I just gave the averages because I thought that's important, it's just to see what other people are charging. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, our, the lot prices, what happens with the money, just to clear that up with everybody, is the graves, the sale of graves goes into the cemetery trust fund, which is used to make improvements and in the future expand the cemetery. So that money is put somewhere. And the only way you spend that money is you put an article on the town warrant, which we actually have one this year to do some paving, some improvements at Woodlawn. The other money goes back to the general fund every year. Um, I think if you look at, especially like the Saturday openings, when we go in on Saturday. Can I just, yep. I just, I want to. What goes back to the general fund, Chris? The other, the uh, openings. Like when we when we do a funeral, we get char we charge two hundred dollars to the funeral home to have the funeral at our at our cemetery. Yeah. So there's a two hundred dollar fee that goes back to the general fund. That doesn't go into the cemetery trust. Jeez, I, Only the I, sale always, I always thought everything that went with that was supposed um, to go in the cemetery. Michael, trust. that's correct. Am I, am I right? It, it, the money, the only money that goes back to the uh, cemetery trust is the sale of lots. The other money, you know, the other Just money the goes back lots? to the uh, goes back in the general fund. Hmm. But what happens is, if you look at the, especially on the weekend openings, I mean, we're we're a lot lower. I mean, we people do a double take when we tell them what our prices are. They can't believe how low they are, and it really doesn't affect the cemetery department at all, uh, except for the sale of lots. But a weekend opening, for instance, we'll have three people there getting paid four hours of overtime. You know, we lose money when people do a weekend, you know, do a weekend opening. We, we should be, you know, there should be a deterrent for people to come to want to do weekend, uh, weekend burials, you know, if they want to do, especially cremations, you know, because those, they have leeway on when they do it. There's no deterrent for them to come in and do a Saturday cremation. It costs have a lot of money to do that, a lot more than the whatever we're charging, $100. I don't have the paper in front of me, so I'm not sure exactly what the numbers are. But basically, you know, what was asked of me is to just to kind of come up with a general, you know, uh, uh, an idea of what other towns are charging, which is what we have. And um, as far as our grave sale prices, you know, I don't think they're, they're a lot lower, but they're not as low compared to our opening prices. Our opening prices are half or less than, than what everybody else is charging, so. What's the, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what's the balance of the trust fund? I believe right now there's somewhere in the order of $100,000 in it. 
And we chip away, we spend a little bit here and there on improvements and stuff, but in general, it's, it's going up. But what, what you got to guard against is, uh, you know, I, I probably won't end up doing it, but 20 or 30 years from now, someone's going to have to expand that cemetery, and we need enough money in there to do that. You know, the, the design is done, so a lot of the, the, the tough part of it, a lot of the expensive part is done, you know, the, the department itself could do some of the work for sure, you know, so it, it's, you know, the next phase of the cemetery isn't anywhere near as expensive as the last phase, the first phase of the cemetery, you don't have to build the fountain, you don't have to build the building, you know, the, the design is done, but there still has to be enough money in there to expand the cemetery, that's where the money comes from to, to do an expansion, so. And, and but there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lots to sell before we get to that point. You know, there's a lot of lots up there. So. Mr. Chairman, I just as a suggestion, I mean, I, I, having been involved when we did the uh, the new the creation of the new cemetery and we, we rehabilitated the Woodlawn Cemetery, I was on that committee years ago, and um, at that point in time, we were way below, you know, the average in in uh, Central Massachusetts for you know, the work that we've done, you know, burials, you know, openings and things mm -hmm. of that nature that, again, we weren't covering the cost and it just doesn't make sense and it's not good business to at least not cover your cost. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what fixed price it would be, you know, to be able to do it correctly, but, I mean, I would move that we have the superintendent come up with the, uh, I know what you're saying, what the average is, but obviously maybe you could have something in mind where you think it's the... Just what the cost, what I think our cost yeah, is to do. What we, yeah, and maybe even a recommendation. So Maybe even a recommendation. That's what I mean. Yeah. So that no, you know. I do it now. No, no, no. Is that yeah. in the form of a motion? Yeah, I'll make yeah. that in the form of a motion. Is yeah. there a second to that? Second that. Any yeah. further discussion? Just, yeah, we need some guidance on, you know, what you think yeah. of can you Sale of lots, I suppose what I can do on the sale of lots is look at how many lots we have left so everybody would have an idea that, hey, at $400 a lot, this is how many lots we have left to sell, so that's how much money we have. But we got to upkeep them too, you know. So, mm -hmm. But I'll put something like that together. As far as I couldn't tell you what what it's worth, because I don't know what twenty years from now it's going to cost to expand the cemetery. Right. Just don't know. We have that for our next next packet, Chris. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Thanks. Michael. Next order, compensatory time. Just an, an issue for the board to consider. Um, you know that the there's some employees uh, that are currently had some comp time on the books. The personnel bylaw allows allows it subject to bylaw allows it subject to the discretion of the department. However, the current position of this uh, personnel board is that it should not be uh, should not be utilized. Uh, so just wanted to see if the selectmen agree with that, the policy, and how you'd like to proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I, I would just, back in the past, just to go back, when we used to, se Secretary of the Selectmen, they used to be able to, uh, you know, accumulate time. And then on Fridays, the person wasn't working. I mean, everybody knows that these offices are very busy and someone has to be there. So mm -hmm. I, I would be against... Uh, letting people accumulate, you know, time well. and be able to take off because then they're out of the workplace and that doesn't accomplish any good at all. I think you have to set some kind of a pay standard that if they're going to be there, they're going to be, they've got to be paid for it because I think you get into a dangerous area of people. Well, that's where we are, where we are right now. We have uh, had an ongoing issue with the town hall custodian where um, there's a claim of over 400 comp hours on the books that hasn't been used and it's just been carried over and carried over and carried over and we tried to uh, work on it last year and we just couldn't get to it. I just don't want to see us get any further well, higher I, in comp time and the uh, building inspector's office the same problem. Well I don't want to, I mean I don't think I have the right to say what's happened in the past. I'm just saying I think from a policy standpoint I think that's not a good area to get into. I think people should be paid for the time Absolutely. that they're doing the I job. Agree. Um, you know, I can't speak to hours that have been accumulated by anyone, yeah. and that's not my intent. My intent is saying that I think if the, if the uh, permitting clerk is is working for other boards, I know those other boards do have, mm -hmm. or they should have a budget that can accommodate for that person to be paid for the hours that she's servicing those other boards. And I know, and I thought that that's what they did in the past. In other words, I thought the planning board 
had money in their budget to pay for someone to take minutes of their meeting and things right. of that nature. I, I agree with you. I, I agree with the uh, no comp time. I, I just worry that going forward, right, the budget's just about finalized, the budget's finalized, right? We're going to town meeting with it, and they, you know, do they have the money in their accounts to pay this over time? That's what we, you know, that's why that's, we wanted to, we tried to bring this up in the past, you know I mean? and we, we have a substantial debt owed to one employee well, that is countering a lot of hours, and yeah. the other employee is also countered with a lot of hours, and they're not using the comp time, they can't take the comp time, they're mm -hmm. telling us, and, uh, you know, we either need to pay them what we owe them right now and, and verify the hours that have been worked and pay the past due balance and start off the new fiscal year with whatever extra you work, you get paid. And it yeah. doesn't go to comp time because we have to honor the uh, yeah. personnel well, ball it, by law. Obviously, if it wasn't an issue, it should have probably been looked at even closer during the budgeting process. But, I mean, I don't know as far as the permitting clerk, I mean, how much is in the planning board's budget that, that would be yeah. expended by that person or the ZBA. I don't know what board she covers anymore. I think she does both. Okay. Yeah. But I, but I think, uh, um, I don't know, I suppose that could be looked into between now and before the finance committee meets tomorrow night. And Can we I mean, get if, a, if, if we're a talking about a thousand dollars or something, I think that it's it's an imperative for someone to find it somewhere so that it's in that budget. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I mean, maybe you could see what the schedule looks like for the planning board for the next six months or the ZBA for the next six months. Yeah. Okay. So, Michael, we'll look into the figures and see what we can do with the finance. Yeah, committee. currently it's funding you projected for FY08, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on these figures, but I believe it's 1500 for conservation. Yeah. I think it's 1100 or so uh, for zoning and maybe 2100 for planning. Well, that yeah, certainly that seems right. adequate. Okay. It certainly and seems adequate. With regards to the town hall custodian, did you project any extra money for overtime, snow removal, what well, have you? There is money in, in, in other wages. Uh, okay. However, uh, and again, I, I can't recall that number. I think we were hoping to get like 2000 in there. But there is coverage for vacations right. as well. Uh, but the main additional work would be snow shoveling in the winter mm -hmm. and then covering vacations when the custodian's out, mm -hmm. uh, out uh, using his, his leave time. So uh, we would have to see if that 2000 would be sufficient, but it should come fairly close. Okay. I mean, depending on the severity of the winter, uh, right. obviously it's what fluctuates. Sure. The money would be there, so. But I think we also need to establish from this point on, there is no more comp time. Mm -hmm. We need to do the, that quite that's, clear. That's what I want to understand. Right. Um, as far as a policy point of view, I mean, you know, we can say, it's our policy that we don't approve comp time. But I mean, what makes that really happen? I mean, is it personnel board bylaw? Or well, I think, I, again, I think the pilot, personnel bylaw permits it subject to the discretion or implementation of each department head. So uh, you know, their recommendation, I think, was that there not be comp time, but I think it, it would then be up to each department to formulate that policy for employees and departments that come under their jurisdiction. So if the Board of Selectmen uh, endorse that policy, then it would cover all those departments that, uh, that answer to the two. Well, then I would move that any department that's on the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen does not approve any um, comp time for any of the employees that are under the yeah. departments. Is there and a I second, second to that? Uh, any discussion? Yeah, I mean, I'd second that. I'd amend it to say that we send a letter as such. Exactly, that each yeah. department had or, uh, get a notice to indicate that uh, they should not be approving any further okay. use at that time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 unanimous. Okay. Thank you. The next uh, would be the, the filtration plant dedication. I think we jumped over that one. I'm sorry. Um, I have a tentative date of September 14th, and Harold Lott will do the particulars with us and putting that together. He thinks early fall would be. Excuse me. Oh, I, I knew you looked familiar. I, I'm here, but. Um, <laughs> okay, Harold, stop me beforehand. And, uh, is it? He got me on the phone. He called me on the phone. Okay. And um, I wasn't there, so I, I just got back from. Okay, he's right. downstairs at a hearing. He took he he told me to pencil in September 14th. Okay. That's a Friday and that he would move forward with us and work with Michael and I on the finalization of okay. the plans. All right. Please. I just ran up here because I got the phone call. I just got home. And I <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 I'm 
He's down. He is in the building. He's just tied up downstairs. Yeah. The, D the DPW has secured a sign. Yes. Uh, uh, and the date was something we could work towards for a goal for a date. We could right. set a program, and we'd ask that the family also help supply any uh, inv inv invitation list of people that you would like to see. Right. You need us to send to send uh, letters off to. Okay. Okay. We'll get that done for September 14th. That's the tentative date. That is the tentative date that Harold gave me to pencil in. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to knuckle him for a week. Okay. So we're all set with that. You're all set. With him and yes. And with your, I mean, if whatever, whoever he has, a family spokesperson will be happy to roll up our sleeves and work with you in any way we can. No, no. I'm here, God. Yes, so, I remember. So, we're like ships passing in the night. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure he's here. He was here until, and I think he's coming back up for executive session, but I'm not sure. Yeah, he is. Okay. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome, Mary Beth. Thank, thank you for coming in. Okay. The rest is just informative, or do we have anything else under old and new? I signed the library grant for Donnie Lowe last week for the USDA. It's a lengthy process, and Donnie should be applauded for helping them find that money. Um, it's, it's, I mean, the paperwork involved in some of these grant processes is just unbelievable. It was like a stack of this that he and I had to sign and Holly Sargent had to attest to. Just to get $5,000, they must have killed 200 trees. Uh, anyways, I mean $5,000, I'm sorry. There was some informal uh, things that was put into the packet. I don't know if anybody wants to discuss uh, some well, of the issues. Under information, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, item G. I make sure the uh, planning board gets a copy of this so they can sure. try to figure out some if we have any applicable ground fields that we can apply for this. What is that on? Sorry, item Informational G. item G, Michael. Could, could we forward information off to the planning board to see if they have any input on that? Sure. Okay. Actually, item H, there was a letter from the Walpole Board of Selectmen. Does the board want to act on that? Out. I personally am in favor of uh, endorsing what they're doing. Um, it's to ask the, um, the state to further restrict, not further restrict, but to not um, add on to the uh, unfriendly 40B application mm -hmm. process. Um, so I'd like to actually take a formal vote of our board to uh, endorse what they're doing and send them a letter as they've asked here. Okay. Is that in the form of a motion? Yes. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Michael, if you could send a letter of support off to the town of Walpole. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, under uh, uh, last meeting we had talked about, I had brought up about the town administrator's duties. Mm -hmm. I know that Michael had uh, supplied in all the packets. Yeah, I had him put in his uh, latest contract that we all signed. I and then to make was a, yeah. And then you had put in an informative uh, review of... Uh, I believe it was Sutton. Yeah. everyone had a chance to digest some of this stuff for review? Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, just just to uh, go over it was basically and I, as I said before um, looking at the contract that the, the board had had entered into with the administrator I think um, did really a great job uh, one of the issues that I thought was important uh, was the issue of appointing and having the uh, authorization on a day-to-day -day basis to, uh, uh, you know, have some real teeth to the position as far as uh, delegation of authority and, and uh, appointing of positions and things of that nature. And, and being just as an example, uh, if there was a position on the DPW that <clears throat> the administrator would be able to work with the superintendent and, and essentially come up to uh, a list of, of candidates for the position and then the administrator would make a recommendation to the board 
as to uh, you know the decision of who they felt was appropriate for the department and um, and things of that nature. So that's basically where I was coming from, and and I think that a lot of communities have. Uh, really gone that way and, and obviously some communities don't go the town manager form of government uh, they go to the strong town administrator form of government and this is essentially just really piggybacking on on the duties that were uh, covered in the contract to the administrator over the next uh, three years so um, I'd hope that the board would look at it on a favorable basis uh, I certainly think that uh, it's needed <laughs> excuse me, on a day-to-day -day basis to have that uh, extra authority uh, from an administrative position. So that's where I'm coming from. Pretty much, doesn't that exist, though, in general, Michael? Uh, he doesn't have appointing authority. Appointing authority? Well, that's not in the day-to-day -day operations, I don't think. That's well, that's, that's well, what would make it a strong town administrator. Okay. How do you delineate between a strong town administrator and a town manager? And what I'm saying is some towns have the difference between, well, a town, a, most often when you go to a town, a minutes, a town administrator, it usually happens through a tariff, charter commission type of thing. Right. A town manager, as I think I said uh, in the last meeting, town of Framingham, didn't do it through a town uh, charter. They just did it through a town meeting article and then um, had it uh, home rule petition through the administrative branch, uh, through the, uh, the elective branch of government. Okay. And I mean, it's, you know, it, it's something that I, I feel very strongly about and, and I endorse, but, you know, it's I'm open for discussion. And I, I guess my, my question, I'll rephrase it, when I, when I mean delineate, when you have a town manager, right, as opposed to a strong town administrator, wh where do you see the, the you know, the difference? Uh, I don't really see a lot of difference, to well, be quite so honest. So it is, there is, there is a little difference, I think. Oh, you think a little, all right. Well, I'm thinking more about, man you know, when I think manager, I think, you know, managing people, managing money. Yeah. And I think this adds managing, just managing people. And not the money aspect. Right. I mean, there is well, that going on, but, you know, we have a finance committee. Mike you know. like already does the, the budget part of it anyway, so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of like the handling the money part. Um, I mean, I, I, I can offer my opinion on this. Well, that's why I brought it up for discussion. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my, my opinion is, um, you know, this... The charter did go to, to town meeting, and uh, it was voted down, you know, overwhelmingly, you know. And uh, it, it's a very sensitive subject about... Um, well, don't forget the charter commission was you accepted everything and you accepted nothing. So the, that, that is very difficult, I think, Tony, to say that the townspeople, the 37 or 38 percent, how many ever people uh, voted in favor of the charter commission, there was probably a lot of people who voted against the Charter Commission, but weren't against everything that was in the Charter Commission. But uh, unfortunately, there's no way for anyone to make an educated opinion as to what they liked or they disliked, because the vote was that you take all or you take nothing. So. I can say anecdotally that after the vote for the Charter, having been on the Charter Commission, almost every person that came up to me and told me that they voted against it, told me they voted against it because they felt that the town manager form of government gave the town manager too much power and that they didn't want that. That was one of the main sticking points with that charter. And I've heard that from an awful lot of people. And I, you know, some I could say, I just, I heard just the opposite. The pe some people thought that that was the best part of it. Yeah. And some of the other parts were the parts they didn't like. So I guess it all depends on who you're talking to yeah. and who's, you know. I, I had other comments as well, but that was, that was a, a very common theme of, um, the comments that I got afterwards, you know, that, that people just felt, no, you're taking away the Board of Selectmen's um, authority and you're, you're giving it to a town manager. So, I mean, I, in, in my uh, opinion, I mean, that's, that's what I heard, you know, that's what I heard and that's the people have spoken, you know, that's what they said. 
Well, this can always be done by a bylaw. I mean, if the Board of Selectmen choose not to, in, you know, incorporate in the contract, it can always be done at town meeting with the bylaw change, so. Um, um, but that, once you do a bylaw change, does that have to be voted on? Uh, well, if, the, if, the, if, if there are bylaw changes, is it my understanding, that are going before the voters at, at the town meeting, that, that someone can make an amendment to the bylaws to include um, making a strong town administrator? With these? With what you have highlighted, I'm just saying. I think that you know you don't need you don't need a charter commission to, to do that. Oh no, you, no. you know, and I, so I agree with you there legally no. And at some point in time, my honest opinion is I think the people of Clinton will will have that choice to make. But you know, I mean, yeah. again, it's it's up it's up there for discussion. I don't want to put uh, the administrator who's sitting in front of us in a, in a you know yeah, a difficult uh, just, position yeah. here. But you know, I think that you know, I, I, it's just something I. I really honestly and firmly believe is in the town's best interest, and I think that um, it would just greater enhance um, someone who I think, you know, has been here for over 12 years and is certainly very capable. And I, I recognize just by the fact that, uh, uh, you know, his contract was renewed, but uh, I think that there's certainly always room for improvement, and I think this is one of the areas that I, I really see that, uh, you know, could, you know, really, really improve this position. Yeah, I mean, but again, it's it's up there for discussion, and um, the board could also always afford Michael the opportunity to um, go forward with the hiring process as recommended in this description of the uh, town administrator powers and duties. At any given point in time, we could instruct Mr. McGowan to go ahead and hire his own people. I, I think. Yeah, the board. So the board of selectmen already have that. Yeah, we have that authority to do that now, and um, quite honestly. I don't see opening up the contract at this point in time. I've had former selectmen that aren't here anymore thought we worked out a, a very strong and amicable contract amongst ourselves and Michael. Um, yeah, so. I mean, that, that's another about opening up the contract. I feel, you know, we kind of all were on the same page. We had worked quite a few meetings together to get it settled. And I think it was one of the smoothest transitions we had yeah. amongst all the contracts we <laughs> renegotiated, oh, to be honest with you. Absolutely. And I mean, I'd like to make a comment that, you know, I think Michael does a tremendous job. And I think right now he's, he's basically overburdened. And we, he's got more work than he could ever possibly do. Because if, if I were to look at this contract as it's written today, there are things in here that can be expanded upon and done. Like, centralized purchasing, for instance, right? There's another thing in there to develop a uh, proposed capital outlay program for the next five years. I mean, a lot of these things fall through the cracks and aren't done, not through Michael's fault, but because there's not enough manpower. So I think that to, you know, to add more duties. Uh, oh, I don't, uh, Joe, that's not adding more duties to give him appointing authority. How does that get him? Well, I, He's I mean, be, I don't want to, I mean, we could go, go on debating this for forever. That doesn't, whether Michael needs an assistant or not, and yeah. I'd be the first one to say we that I think, to go ahead and move I think next that he year is, to, he is to do overwhelmed an to do that. But I think it's just that's what this just does is give give yeah. him more authority on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, you ask for again, opinions. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, I'm just saying that I think those are you know other areas that I whether he's overwhelmed by. I agree. I mean, the last time I was here, I agreed that that. Uh, you know, Michael, certainly uh, there are people who would, you know, say that, that um, you know, Michael didn't get back in a timely manner to him or whatever. Uh, but a lot of times it's, it's, you know, it's not Michael's fault if he can't get to them because he doesn't get the answer back from someone else. And um, I so I agree with you 100 percent. I'm just saying you go on and on and on as far as that goes. I mean, it's easy to. No, and that's not even, that's not even what I was getting at. What I was getting at is there are a lot of things in this contract, right? you know, duties, different line items here, right, that are things that could be expanded upon and done that aren't being done mm -hmm. because Michael doesn't have enough time. Right. So I'm saying to add appointing authority, right, going through resumes, going through whatever, you're just adding another duty. And without an assistant, it would just be, it would just add to it, you know what I'm saying? So if there was an assistant component to it, I think it'd be a lot easier and a lot easier to implement. Well, we did vote for the record to move forward with that this year, and we right. were handed at the tail end, and I'll make sure you both get a copy of this, 
um, we have several towns and maybe we need to expedite and move forward a little quicker through the personnel board. Um, one of the philosophies was to upgrade the current secretary's position or go out and do an executive or whatever they want to call it, municipal administrative assistant. They have all kinds of fancy terms. We've gone to all towns, West Boylston, Millbury. Um, I'll make sure you guys have a copy of this so you can look at that. We did vote to do that when we did Michael's contract to get an assistant so that we could add more responsibility to the position. But if he had an assistant to go ahead and prepare other things while he's going out and do other stuff. So I think if we were to concentrate on that this year as a goal, that might be a yeah. very attainable uh, goal to get to and reach. I guess I have one other question with regard to the, with the way you see this, right? Um, you were talking about the ability to appoint people to commissions or committees or whatever. You're not looking to in any way take away the selectman's ability to, uh, like we did with the water rates, right? We, had, we formed a water rate task force. Well, the, the board of selectmen in, in both, most communities where you have a strong town administrator, mm. the administrator is the administrating authority, mm -hmm. and the board of selectmen are the policy people. Sure. You set policy. So no, in no way are you doing that, that you're setting policy. That's policy. Mm -hmm. And I, I would think that you, being on the Charter Commission that you know what authorities go with town managers and town, town administrators yeah. as opposed to, you know, so those are just, you know, it means that the person becomes the administrator mm -hmm. and, and, you know, no different than Worcester City Council or any, any of those others. Sure. You know, they're the policy makers. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, yeah, my, my only comments would be I just think it would be a step forward uh, as we go forward in the progress uh, of the town. I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be done right tonight, but, you know, a town meeting, maybe we, we do try an amendment and, and see how the townspeople feel. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised, you know. Um, you never know. We may have an opportunity. If we have a, a town ballot, you know, in the fall, if we have one. Yep. We could add a question in there to say, you know, would you support a... a well, I can do it right at this town meeting. I don't know that the current, uh, where I sit on the bylaw review committee, I don't know if the current revision that we've been working on for two years will be ready for town meeting. We're meeting tomorrow night to see where we are uh, with the recount. Phil Boyce hasn't been able to, he's got everything on disk and we've done a lot of the grammar and changes and um, actually I brought this item up at our last meeting of last week and we're trying to tweak things out. I don't even know if we're gonna be ready for town meeting this June 20th. We possibly could be, but oh, we're, yeah. doing, we're doing our darndest to get it done. It's, yeah. Phil got put behind, I'm not putting the blame on Phil, but he's been the strong arm in collaborating all the new amendments to the bylaw review and Mark Arcabucci chairs it and uh, Kathy DeVerney has been our specialist in grammar, and we're almost there. We, we, we're hoping we can get it all done tomorrow night, and I think we, not to put Dennis in the spot, but he has to review some of the stuff as well, and I think he's reviewed a lot of the things. We are missing a few items uh, where we don't address certain, certain departments in town, and we didn't know if we wanted to try and do that Thursday night, uh, but We'll see where we well, are. That's okay. <laughs> if it doesn't happen this meeting, it will certainly happen, I believe, within the next year. So, yeah. okay. I mean, honestly, it, 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 while I'm sitting here as a selectman, I will do everything in my power to uh, to try to, uh, you know, go forward for. The, I think it's in the best interest of the town. Okay. Um, Thank well, you. Then. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Not to get off subject, but with the bylaw review committee and the proposed bylaw changes. Don't those have to be forwarded on to the Attorney General for uh, his blessing before they could be voted? Correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but it comes after town meeting. Yeah. After town meeting approves it, then the town, uh, the Attorney General, correct? Correct. correct. He reviews all He reviews all after town meeting approval. approval. If they don't get approved at town meeting, then we go back to square one. Check I think. Yeah. Is that correct, Dennis? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if they're not approved at town meeting, they never get to the mm -hmm. Attorney General's office. That's okay. what I was told it's today. It's I don't know. It, because the, the charter was the opposite. It had to be approved before, by the mm -hmm. Attorney General before it could be Well, I guess because these, 
these are, these are already been approved. They're just being revised. Yeah. After after town meeting vote, then they go down. The packet goes down, and then you. they review the revisions that the town has made. Okay. And then they give it their blessing. And the, the charter statute specifically required that, Joe, that had to be done before. Yeah. Where with zoning bylaws and other bylaws, it's always after. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Anything else, Michael, that we're moving along with? That's it again. If we just we do have a couple other executive systems, but just a brief one, and then we can come back. Okay. And then go into the other two. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session under Article Three. Three. Committee reports. Are there any committee reports? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Public comment. No public comment. No committee reports. I entertain a motion to go into executive session for a brief so discussion under so Article moved. Three. Moved by Mr. Haley, second. I'll second it. Second by Ms. Dicko. Any discussion? All those in favor require the roll call vote. Mary Rose Dicko? Aye. Kevin Haley? Aye. Anthony Ferrantino? Aye. Joan Nataro? Aye. Bob Pasquale? Aye. We will reconvene after this brief executive session. Annual town meeting warrant so we can get it off finalized to the finance committee for tomorrow night. Yes, and just, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that the draft that was put on the board's package should reflect any changes that the board made last last uh, week so if there are any questions you can uh, feel free to to ask me and we can review them uh, one issue that i'd like to bring to the board that in article uh, article number nine that the figure needs to be in the, uh, changed to reflect four thousand seven hundred seventy five dollars also move chair okay is there a second to that second Sorry, Second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes nay. And other than that, I think uh, the issues, uh, if anyone has any question, uh, the Finance Committee is meeting tomorrow night on their recommendations uh, for the financial articles and uh, I'll before it's, it would need to be advertised uh, to meet the bylaw next Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, uh, Friday, Tuesday, in order to make the week a week before town meeting. Three publications within, uh, with the first one being at least a week before town meeting. So, what time uh, is the finance committee meeting tomorrow? Night? I think they meet at seven. I believe seven. Yeah. Here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I will do is uh, then after. Uh, if the board is uh, willing to approve the warrant uh, and just subject to any final legal review by town solicitor after the finance committee takes our actions tomorrow night, um, then just have a uh, town solicitor review it and have it published on Tuesday in the okay. newspaper. That's fine. Michael, on the assessor's warrant articles, um, those are juggled in the back. Do you want them up front where it sets kind of a nice tone? Um, that's up to the board. I mean, what I did is when they were added last week, uh, there were three articles added. One was the uh, tip for Nitro, which I added after the other two tips were currently on the, on the agenda. And the two other articles were considered submitted by selectmen because it was beyond the deadline. Uh, so I put them at the end of the warrant prior to the citizen petitions. We generally keep citizen petitions at the end of the warrant uh, in the order uh, as they were received. So those five are still at the end, but just before the citizen petitions at the end of the uh, selectmen's articles and departmental articles, I added those two veteran articles there. And then I put the TIF just at the end of the other two TIFs. So uh, the wording, I mean, the ordering is certainly up to the board selectmen. Uh, it's just the, uh, the process that I, that I went through. Someone that just had reviewed this thought it would set a nice tone with the taxpayers to show that we're giving our veterans some uh, afforded benefits might set, set a better tone and sentiment for town meeting overall to see that we're reaching out to uh, our veterans that have served our country. But it's the pleasure of the board, whatever the board thinks. If you want to leave them where they are, that's fine. If you want to move them up, that's also fine. Well, I just got a concern about uh, one of the citizens' petitions. I mean, if I mean, we have to, in the best interest of the time, you know, some of these, like Article 28, I mean, they, they can't be approved, right? 
I think Article 28 becomes a mute point only because of the uh, the uh, legal opinion Michael received from that attorney regarding that. And that's why the other article we kept in and we, we uh, changed the wording and the language so that it could be done in a legal stance. So I don't know if somebody from the Council well, on saying, Aging is going to get up to amend Article 28 and leave it mute. I don't know. Well, if the other article passes, it's a moot point. Well, yeah, it's moot. moot. It's totally moot. Yeah, every, just, every, by law, though, every citizen's petition has to be put on as worded. can't be amended by the Board of Code, be amended on the floor. And every one of those articles, even if it's an illegal article, which I'm not saying that one is, but if it was, it still has to be voted on, yep. and then if town meeting passes it, it still if it doesn't pass legal muster, then it can't be implemented. Okay, all right. Okay. So that's, that was my concern. If it didn't pass. Yeah. Okay. So there's a motion to accept the warrant as presented. Did we already do that? So moved. If not. Okay. Is there a second to that. A second. Okay. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Move forward with the plan. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And we're going back into executive. Is there any public comment? Being no public comment, we will be going back into executive session and will not be reconvening. We have two executive sessions under Article 3. This requires a roll call vote. Um, do I have a motion to go into so executive moved. session? So moved by Mr. Haley, second? Second. Second by Mr. Ferrantino. Any discussion? Being none. Roll call vote. Anthony Ferrantino? Aye. Joseph Nataro? Aye. Mary Rose Dickout? Aye. Kevin Haley? Aye. Chair, both sides. Thank you and good night.